We don't usually do stories where we feel the need to say, don't try this at home, but every once in a while something attracts our attention. We want to show it to you, we just don't really want to try it ourselves. But that's what makes Daredevils Daredevils. Patrick Murphy tonight on some folks who love playing with fire. It's totally dangerous, yeah, it's real fire. I actually had someone come up to me a couple weeks ago and tell me that it looked convincing um, and it looked like fire. And I said, that's because it was. Uh, so it's actually fire and you can actually get hurt. Dangerous, unpredictable, and fascinating. And like moths to a flame, the members of Pandora's Matchbox are drawn to the heat, the light, and the magic of fire. Pandora's Matchbox is a troop of St. Louis performers who dance, spin, eat, and breathe fire at galleries, street festivals, and parties. Something that I like about it is that you're in control of something that's very difficult to control. And I'm having power and control over an element that is difficult to control. And I think that's cool. I like to be able to do that and to work with that. And I like to have, you know, the fire close to me and be able to move it, you know, close to my body and far away from my body and manipulate it. Personally, I started uh, playing with or performing with fire um, as sort of meditation. Um, somewhat, some people do it as dance, some people do it as an exercise. For me, it was totally about meditation. Strangely enough, it's more loud than anything. Uh, the flames are there and there is heat, but the sound is really what is striking. It's a uh, loud enough that you really can't hear what's going on outside. It's, it's a very angry noise. It, it, it's something that definitely draws you back again and again. Performing with fire doesn't leave much margin for error. So, how do you learn it? There's some videos, but there's not a lot of books or material that you can do. Mostly you just learn from other people. Um, people teach each other and it's kind of like a chain reaction. One person teaches another person or you try things, you just experiment with it and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But if it doesn't work you get burned. So one evening a week they practice their routines without fire at the Mad Art Gallery in Soulard. Most people practice unlit for quite a period of time until they get the use of their tool down really well and then light it, practice lit a while and then go on to you know performing or doing fire in other venues. Performers tend to specialize. Some twirl lit staffs. Others spin fiery bags called poise. Laura Spikinger eats fire, which is harder to practice without, well, fire. I do eat fire. It means I take this torch right here and I dip it in white gas and then I light it on fire and then I take the torch and put it in my mouth. You rub it on your tongue, or you can stick it in your mouth, you can balance it in your teeth, um, you can put it in your mouth and breathe a little flame. So it's kind of um, like a meditative breath, so you're always exhaling, you never inhale. If you inhale, <laughs> that's a problem, so don't inhale when you eat fire. I read a book. I looked online and then I talked to my dentist and my doctor and my dentist thought it was weird that I wanted to ask him about that but he actually said I would burn my face off before I would ever hurt my teeth or gums so he didn't mind the fire eating at all <laughs> and my doctor uh, was fine with it too and though injuries are rare things do not always go exactly as planned I ha once had to go to the emergency room that was not fun uh, that was not fun at all. No good, no big scars, something on my hands, and yes, I was doing something that even I knew I should not have been doing that day, and have never done that again. I won't go into details. Actually, we have a pretty formal, strong, firm set of uh, safety rules that involve uh, safety towels, damp towels for putting out little fires, always on hand. No one's allowed to light up without somebody with a safety towel on hand. Yeah, it's dangerous, and there's fire, but it's still a very controlled environment. The mysterious energy of fire has always inspired our imaginations. Its power to cleanse as well as destroy symbolizes universal forces beyond our control. To dance with its danger and beauty ritualizes the human condition. 
from the, the research that I've done, you can it'd be hard pressed to find uh, any culture throughout uh, the world, really, in any country, any continent, that did not have some sort of fire ritual. Fire is something that unites people on a uh, subconscious um, and unconscious level. Uh, something that we all understand, have history with. Uh, it's one of the few things that people can relate to, no matter who they are.